What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the Creative Exchange. Today is a special one. We have my mom on the podcast. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. It's weird for the and, and my father is in the background just trying to be very quiet because he's not used to having a podcast set up on the kitchen table. <laughs> Jeannie. Yes. It's time to tell your life story. Oh boy, this is going to be thrilling. <laughs> How much time do we have? I know, right? <laughs> but no, this will probably be like half me talking, half my mom talking, okay. because when you have your mom on the show, we're probably right. going to talk about you, me as well. Yes. So maybe we can dish some embarrassing stories and things. And on the previous podcast, usually it's all about the guests, you know, they're right. like, creators or entrepreneurs they offer some life lessons right. to you hustlers out there but i created you but so I'm a you creator. created a little hustler i've had just young people i don't want to call you old I, that's you but know, it is what it is older people i think have wisdom <laughs> that's true that they could share to people like us right people in the right. 20s some life wisdom some life wisdom yes so let's start off with the fact that i call you genie and yes, people are really confused freak people out it does they think I, I like disrespect you yeah i wonder why people find that disrespectful if i don't think it's disrespectful yeah i mean if you were doing that because it started it started way. in high school i feel like yeah. right because remember Paige's mom name was was genie <gasps> Paige, Paige had her mom named Jeannie. And so didn't that, so you and Paige yeah. used to talk about the genies. The genies. Right? Yeah, and I so think that's. it just kind of. And then even Mrs. Vins, we, I yeah. would call some moms by their yeah. first name. But it was yeah. only if it was a respectful thing. Right, right. I definitely called my uh, math teacher. Yeah. Different yeah, he names didn't like that, yeah. He didn't like that. Yeah. So. so. But those, you know, it's funny. It, like in the comments of videos, people will be like, why do you call your mom Jeannie? And, and I think I, I did comment back one time that, you know, anybody can be a mom, but not anybody can be a genie. Wow. So I feel, there you, know, you go. I'm happy to be Not genie. everyone can be a genie. That's right. So we're here in the home that I grew up in. Yes. We just discover that it's been 20 years. Well, we didn't just discover. Well, I, we, just, we just talked yeah. about it. Yeah, we've been here 20 years. Yeah. You wow. were three when we moved in. Oh my goodness. And I just found out I was pregnant with your brother when we moved in. And this house has so many stairs. Yes. So you as a pregnant woman had to walk up the stairs. Yes, but it was good. Yeah, so 20 years in the suburbs of Dallas, Texas. Right. And you've always, you've always been in the DFW area, mm -hmm. right? Right. Wait, where did you grow up? Way the for Texas. <laughs> Way the for Texas. <laughs> so if you guys don't know... If Texas, maybe you've never been to Texas, or maybe you're from out of the country. People probably associate Texas with what? Cows, Cows horses, horses, yeah. that life. Did you mm -hmm. live that life? I did, yes. Growing up, my father had a ranch and still has a ranch. And so I grew up around cattle and horses. And we would have like baby calves that maybe their mothers died giving birth, mm -hmm. and we would bring the baby calves home and bottle feed them and oh my gosh yeah it was really bottle kind of feed them to their death though yeah yeah no no <laughs> <laughs> ultimately well, some cows have a nice life yeah because i mean um some cattle my father would just keep mm -hmm. and like you know a cow not not a steer or a bull right but a cow he would keep on the farm just to have more cows like right. you know Right, As a breed, right. he would breed them. Yes. And so they would have a long, nice life just, just having, having babies. Having babies. Just having babies. Like Did you me. ride horses and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. My first horse was Ginger. <laughs> and if you can't she, tell, if you're watching the video version of this, Jeannie used to be a Ginger. Now yes. she has so much blonde in her hair. Yes. You're a beautiful Ginger still. Uh, well... No, my first horse was a Shetland pony, and it was it was terrible. My dad <laughs> took me out like to this ranch that was you know had horses because he said, "Hey, you want a horse?" I'm like, "Sure." What, what kid doesn't want a horse? A Shetland pony is like what people yeah. wish for when they're kids. Yeah, it's like that Seinfeld episode, but we won't get into that. Anyway, <laughs> there's always a Seinfeld episode <laughs> yeah. for um, And so this Shetland pony was in this um, corral, and it was all saddled up. And so my dad was like, well, go get on it and, and you know, see if you like it. I'm like, okay. And uh, I'd ridden horses with him, but I'd never ridden a horse by myself. And so um, I went and I got on him and the horse just went, he just trotted t -t 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 around the corral and came back. My dad was like, yeah, that's great. Let's get him. Okay. So we took him out to my dad's farm and I got on and that horse 
just took off with me. With you on it? With How me on old it. were you? Oh, I was five, six. And I mean, he just like, I mean, it was a huge farm, no fences. <laughs> and he ran me through trees and I was like hanging on for dear life. My dad had to jump on his horse and come oh, grab me. It, it, that gosh. was the worst horse. I hated that horse. So See, nowadays it's him. like, oh yeah, I had a dinky dog or cat. Yeah. Like, you know, you have experiences with yeah. actual majestic beasts yes. that threw you off the back. Yes. I'm sorry for that bad experience. Yes. But, but you, you had know, rodeos. Yeah, went to rodeos. And and so very Texan experiment. Very Texas, experiment. yes. I grew up very Texas. Yeah. I grew up with what you would probably think a Texan's life would be. Right. You and then you got out of there and you went mm-hmm. more towards the city. I did. Moved to Dallas after college. And of course my father, even though Dallas is only 60 miles away, my father thought that it was just the worst thing ever. Because literally I was the first person in four generations to move outside our county. The county. The county That's of Texas. That's pretty bold. Yeah. 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 So everybody else, my parents, their parents, their parents, they had all lived in that county. And all I will and say so, is thank goodness you got out. Yeah. Because... And then you. <laughs> I moved to Dallas. Dallas like, New York. Yeah. And then here's Sarah. She moves to Nashville. And we're like, oh, gosh, I'm so glad it's Nashville. Just Nashville. We can handle Nashville. And that's what I told my dad, your grandfather. I'm like, oh, I'm so glad it's just Nashville because she wants to go to New York City. I'm so glad. And, and then nine then months later, I was like, go to screw this place. Yeah. I mean, Nashville is a great city. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if you do not want to be a country music video yeah. uh, cinematographer for the yeah. rest of your life, yeah. there's it's really not the no place point. to be. Yeah, no. And everyone yeah. who I wanted to meet, I met in the span of those nine months. And mm-hmm. I was kind of like, okay it was well fun. what's next and yeah. it was fun I kind of like checked it off my list and yeah. then New York here she comes so yeah. there it is one generation I, after I left yeah, so the I'm, next generation exactly. I'm a fifth generation Texan right who is the Lives first person City. who has lived out of state on yeah. your side I'm only here in Texas for literally a day and a half but it was so weird like waking up in your childhood home yeah. I've only been away from it for like, three years now two yeah. and a half years yeah. And like walking out and it being quiet. I'm not used to it being yeah. quiet. Yeah. No and just like all of the honking. green. Yeah, there's yeah. no honking or whatever. And it's just so like nostalgic. Yeah. And you have more than one room. And to yeah, walk there's out so into. much space. <laughs> yeah. 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 But New York is New York. No, you I know? love New York. I wouldn't want to live there, but I do like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. We'll see if we can get Jeannie to yeah. move to the New York. I think we should tell them the story of what I did recently and didn't get because oh, I haven't yeah. told the internet that well, you yet. should I've tell told the internet because that's interesting. It is interesting. So I really put myself out there recently. She did. <laughs> I was there to it, to witness it. Yeah. Um, so I'm a YouTuber. The YouTube is fun. But what we do or what I do on the YouTube is essentially you're hosting your own show. Right. You know? And so I'm not like other YouTubers where I want to audition and be an actor I don't care about scripted content. I don't want to be on a Disney show. But I love the uh, like nonfiction world. What do you call right. that? Reality Unscripted, kind of, reality, yeah. documentary. documentary series. Yeah. Um, and so I got an opportunity to audition for a hosting role for like this business show, um, which it like happened really last minute. So I was like, ah, like whatever. It'll just be a fun new experience. But it turned into this thing that I felt like I was in a TV yeah, show. Yeah, and it was pretty exciting. And it happened to fall <laughs> on the weekend I was up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jeannie actually like helped. Out. And spoiler, I didn't get it. Yeah. Um, but basically, it's for like a business show. It's all I, I guess, can say. Um, and a friend gave me the opportunity. It was like, okay, go to this location. It's like this business show. Here's a script. So I had to and how you dress. Script. And then dress, you know, you had to have a black blazer, a white tank top, and then uh, black slacks, like business slacks, or, skirt. or a skirt. And so I was like, okay, okay. So and I the kinda... script called for like high heels, yeah, like yeah, a pretty yeah. girl, and for in high like heels. a super. Uh, what were the words? It was what like was the ravishingly word? or stunningly beautiful, or some. It was cra- It was crazier yeah. than that. And yeah. so I was just like, okay, <laughs> like I have the awareness of like, I have. How do you say that? Well, I have the self awareness of. 
I'm not this like bombshell. I think bombshell. Bombshell. That's what I'm not this bombshell beauty model type. You're the girl Mm -hmm. next door. I'm the girl next door. There's you know people can stare at me and watch videos. You know, so I was like, okay, if they want the girl next, like maybe. Yeah. So I walked in, and (laughs) (laughs) it was straight out of TV show. It was straight out of a movie. I literally walked in with this room of girls dressed exactly like me. Except the only difference was they were in like super short skirts and I had like business slacks And they were on. like a foot taller than you. And they you. were like, yeah, they were just models, you yeah. know? They were like super skinny and beautiful. One chick was from the Ukraine, could barely, barely speak English. And like, oh, hey, y'all, like, mm. <laughs> you know? Um, and so it was like, oh man, this is so weird. So I like walked in and like, you know, you, you hand the producer the headshots and kind of do some awkward, yeah, resume. I had to make a resume. So Jeannie was in town during this. So what were you doing the days leading up to it? So Sunday morning, (laughs) after all day of being at uh, the NY panel, NYU panel, and we, then we Hustle threw this NY huge and all New that. York City creator yeah. pop up. So we were we were running all yeah. day. Saturday. Right after that is when we had to get all the stuff done. Yeah, and so then Sunday afternoon was the audition. So Sunday morning, I was on the laptop making your resume. <laughs> so we I, were I don't have a resume. Pictures. No, no. So we got your resume done. We found a headshot. Uh, then we had to get the headshot printed somewhere. So while mm. you were getting ready, I ran literally. <laughs> To the FedEx like up there CBS by Rockefeller, to the FedEx yeah. by Rockefeller Center, um, and got like and got a all really that crappy headshot. Yeah. Like it wasn't really and good. Got the quality. resume printed out. Yeah, got the resume printed out, um, and it, so it was like it was very last minute. It all came together at the last minute. Um, but you and know, look, and you look good. Okay, you did. yeah. So yeah. I look decent. So I walk into the room, and basically, my in startup culture or whatever, they always talk about the term like unfair advantage. So, like as a company, as a human, what is your unfair advantage? And so, me going in there, I wasn't the beautiful, skinny model type, um, but I have a, I'm a YouTuber. I have an audience, right. and I know how to produce things yeah. creatively. You know, I've done my own series and things, so I can offer my talent behind the camera mm-hmm. as well in front of the camera. So and you had business knowledge and I had a lot of business yeah. Knowledge. Yeah, yeah yeah so basically you know I went in there and sold myself more than I sold the lines and I think it went really well and um it was an experience that definitely was uncomfortable yeah I think it's important to and you had to memorize the lines it was like a script I had to memorize the lines which yeah. I never all of my YouTube videos I'll make points and I'll outline them yeah. but I never write out scripts so that yeah. was something very new to me yeah. to memorize scripts yeah and um so it went well yeah. and I got a callback, which was exciting. But then the callback thing, it was just like talking to the people and it, it like, whatever. So basically I didn't get it after the callbacks, but it was like this experience that made me so uncomfortable, <laughs> but it also made me realize like, okay, I could lose a few pounds and maybe I'll get it the next time. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. No, I think, I think there's a lot of cool opportunities out there Yeah, that you met great people and I met great people so context going forward hopefully. exactly I have you know people who are moving and shaking that know who I am now yeah that hopefully they will loop me in on future projects yeah. Yeah. and we can take it from there yeah. and I mean exciting. with every opportunity you learn you grow right? exactly and exactly. it's good for you to have to get out of your comfort zone don't you oh, think yeah. oh I was sweating so oh, much sure. I, I felt like I was middle school Sarah yeah. again yeah I remember middle school when I just sweat for no reason <laughs> I think that's called puberty. (laughs) I know that's called puberty, but I'm like, middle school and high school, you go through things that you think are going to be your entire life. Yeah. And it's, it's living hell. Like I literally would just be sitting in class and I'm just like, why am I sweating? (laughs) I'm not doing anything. And then I'd be on the basketball court and like, wouldn't be sweating at all. I'm like, my hormones are very messed up. (laughs) <laughs> and then I would have, you know, the entire face of just zits. I just recently broke out again. But skin has never been the best right. thing of mine. But in high school, I was just a mess. It's tough. But look at me now, look suckers. Look at you now. I have 330,000 friends. Woohoo! On the internet. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I don't believe you went through any hardship in high school, though, in terms of your appearance. Because I've seen pictures of you. Guys, she was a cheerleader. She has always had a very like skinny, beautiful bod. Well, that's just I don't, I don't think you went that's through just any genetics hardships. though. That, no, I did. I did. You were the cheer. You were a cheerleader. Yeah, I was a cheerleader yeah. and beautiful cheerleader. Had boyfriends. Had boyfriends. But 
I also had parents who had like given up because <laughs> I was like the third child and my sister third and brother were just, you know, so by the time I came around, my parents were just like, whatever. <laughs> and so that got me into some trouble, you know, oh that God. I wish, wish maybe it, I'm, you know, looking back now, I wish I'd had a little bit more like parental super yeah, supervision right. and attention because I got myself in some trouble that, you know. <laughs> Any uh, PG-rated trouble that you would like to share? There <laughs> She's was, like, oh my oh god, gosh. share <laughs> so many. Well, there was one time when my best friend Mary Beth, who still is my best friend, I love her to death. Um, we decided we were going to skip tennis one afternoon. Like tennis Ooh, was the last endless. class of the day. I know, and um, and she lived fairly close to the school, like maybe two blocks away. So, and we didn't even have, you know, there was no reason to skip school. We just didn't want to go to tennis. So we, we just went to her house and then we, we got nervous. So we're like, oh, we better call and tell them, like, pretend like we're our mothers and say, oh, Jeannie had a dentist appointment or something. So we called and the lady who works in the office was friends with my mother. So she knew it wasn't my mother. So dumb. And so we both had to run. We ran back to school and went to tennis. Wait, what did she say? What did they, the No one ever said a thing. Because we, we got there in time to, you know, Did the lady the who you called, though? Or, she was probably she, called my mother. Was she know. legit like, you are not who you say you are? Like, no, she, she was just laughing. You could hear her laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure they probably, like, called my mother. My mother was like, whatever. Oh you know? But anyway, just that, stupid stuff that like was that. was something that we actually did a lot that we had to slow down with because we're like, we're totally going to get caught. But where we went to high school, <clears throat> there was a parking attendant guy who would always yeah. chill his name is jumanji or yeah. his um because he looks like jumanji yeah. his nickname was jumanji um and so oftentimes there would be projects where you know they basically allowed you to leave the classroom to go film right like film something right. um and so, so we did this so much during one project where we would literally put all of my friends in the back of the Honda yeah. element. Like, just put... Like, they didn't wear a seat. They weren't yeah. wearing yeah. seat belts. Just piled in. Yeah, just piled in. And we would just go to Sonic. And that's when the class periods were an hour and a half long. Oh, so you yeah. had more time. Yeah. And so... I would literally like hide everyone in the back of the Honda as Element drove out. as I drove out and just like wave to Jumanji like Haha, doctor's appointment <laughs> and we like go and chill at Sonic and then come back before the bell and we did that probably like three times and like no one to our knowledge yeah because I feel like we would get in legitimate yeah. trouble yeah you probably would have you know yeah. oh man it's just dumb what you do when you're a kid I know right yeah. it's like what's the point of that yeah yeah I don't but, know but no, I can't. I can't really think. It's been so long ago. <laughs> but, but no, yeah, I mean, but, like, you know, high school even, was fun for you, though? Like, oh, yeah. High school was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to your prom? Yes, but I wish I wouldn't have. That's kind of a funny story. Oh. So I was, I mean, I, I don't know if it is or not, but uh, <laughs> this kind of tells you what a jerk I was. Uh, I was dating this guy that I had dated, like, on and off forever. And so we were supposed to go to the prom together. Mm -hmm. um, and then we broke up right before the prom. And so there was this other guy that had kind of liked me on and off, and I knew he liked me. So I went to him, and I was like, hey, ex-boyfriend isn't going to the prom with me now. You want to go? And he's like, oh, I'd love to go. He was so excited. Well, then I got back with my boyfriend right before the prom. And, and you the jerk that him? I am. Yes. Isn't that terrible? So I had to call him up and go, oh, I'm sorry. We're back together. You can't go to the prom with me now. Oh, isn't that terrible? My. See, Jean is someone who had options. Yes. <laughs> okay, people. But then I got, you know, karma because I had the worst time because that guy was such a jerk. The guy, so it, you know, I would have had more fun if I'd gone with right. the other guy. But anyway, I, yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I needed, I needed, oh mother to help me <laughs> through those times that wasn't well, very yeah, nice for my freaking prom yeah. we just went to austin yeah and, but we had fun yeah we had fun but loser me this okay let's high school for me was fine i hated the school part yeah just because i got over it so quick yeah. and there's so many things that i want to do like make stupid internet videos and like hang out with my music friends and play music and band stuff um and so 
most of the people at school, like I'd be fine with at school, but I was never hanging out with people right. after school. Right. And so I wasn't well, in any so clicks. Busy, though. Yeah, and I was busy too. Yeah. So I wasn't in any friend clicks. Right. No one really like had my back or something. Um, and when it comes to prom, you know, not a lot of people were coupled up around this time, right. but there was a sister. I remember that. There was a sister. Yeah. So there was like two or three girls putting everybody putting together. Putting everyone right? together. Yeah. So if you were not in that girl clique, then yeah. you just didn't have a date to right. run. Right. So they were like behind the scenes. I could just see them in the yeah. room with like, you know, the pin dots and the strings mm-hmm. connecting people. Mm-hmm. And like, um, and that was how people got dates. Like, right. oh no, you can't go to prom with him because we already set up right. this chick with like, right. sorry, you're not yeah. in the thing. Um, and it sucked because we actually found like the dopest dress. Yeah, we did. It looked so good on me. Yeah. Um, but really I just pretty. didn't have a date. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, this is feel sorry for me. <laughs> I was a loser in high school. <laughs> you were not a loser. <laughs> but see, but but instead of you just take, because remember you were like, oh, I'll just take so-and-so who didn't yeah. even go to your school, just kind of as like a, oh, well, I'll just take. So, you know, I knew you were going through all that, so I came alongside you and said, Sarah, instead of just taking some rando to the prom and spending yeah. all this money, because it's so expensive, so expensive with the dress and the limo. And, that, and, and the, that was the first school thing that I was going to try to be a part right, of. Because right. up until then, every like homecoming, right. well, like, no, I have to go yeah. practice like guitar. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. I have to go do a video. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is an important. important. Yeah. That was the one thing but you were going to do. But that was the one thing that I was going yeah. to do. Yeah. And so you got so stressed out about that. I mean, do you remember how stressed out you were? Yeah, I mean, you came home was, every day just like, And oh. it was uh, senior year, so yeah. like college and all right. that crap. There was so like, much else going yeah. on. Yeah, so, I mean, that's when I came alongside you and said, Sarah, you know, why are you stressing out about this? Let's just go on a girl's trip. And so we went on a girl's, girl's trip, trip that weekend instead. So see, I wish that my mother in <laughs> high school would have come alongside me and said, Jeannie, forget these loser boys. Let's just go to girls' right. trip. And I would have been like, yay. So and we went on so a fun. girls' trip to Austin, it was fun. Austin, Texas. I don't even remember what we did. We probably just got smashed, right? Because we love yeah, alcohol. that's what we did. <laughs> no, I think we just, I think we just kind of went out and, you know, had a nice day. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, around. Austin Austin's is fun. a cool city. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And that was such a bookend to high school. I was like, screw all of you guys. I'm so over this, you know. And then it was the college chapter that wasn't much better. But one thing that I wanted to ask you, because it's a continual conversation within my either group of friends or just like the creator community out there who follows my stuff, is there's this common conversation of find your passion, like figure out what you want to do, and find something that you actually like you know was that something in like going through your head in college or was it more of just like I just need a job so I can then go live my life yeah I mean I think it was a different mindset back a hundred years ago (laughs) (laughs) Um, because really I mean you know back in the day college was affordable Hmm. for us and so there was there really the plan was you graduated high school, you went to college, you got a degree that's going to get you a good job, mm-hmm. and then you just went to work. You know, I mean, there was no follow your passion. I mean, maybe there was in other places, but in Weatherford, Texas, there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe in Dallas, mm-hmm. Texas, they had that. But in Weatherford, well, Texas, and it was... So how do you remember how much a semester of college was? Oh, it was so cheap. I found a receipt the other day. Uh, when... I started school, it was $4 a semester hour. So if you're taking 15 hours, I can't even do the math, (laughs) but that would be 60 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow. So your tuition was $60. Now, then, of course, I lived in the dorm, but I even found that the other day. I think my my dorm was like $1,200 for, you know, four months. And that was all my food, too. So, and so you have, but you know, even, even back then, even college wasn't a a, a given, like a lot of people I went to school with didn't even go to college. Hmm. You, you, you know, um, but it was just, you know, you get, you get a high school degree, you either get a job Mm -hmm. or you go to school, you know, but there was no follow your passion. Right. You know, and that's when it gets so hairy because then you have parents who are putting 
the same pressure and expectation on their kids, but it's right. a completely different rule book. Right. It is right. not sixty dollars for a right. semester. Oh yeah, it's this just insanity that right. is college yeah. nowadays. No, that don't even get me started. That's my <laughs> pet peeve. Well, because you know, it's not just me, but I also have a little brother yeah. who is nineteen. Yeah. 19 years old. Yeah. So he's going through the whole college thing yeah. right now. Yeah. I mean, why does college at just a normal university, not Harvard, not SMU, not Yale, mm. why does just an average college cost 40000 a year? What are you getting that's worth forty thousand dollars? It's because they make it freaking Disney World now. Like why? Yeah, and like the I, dorms and stuff. Yeah. Like why do all dorms now have to have like laundry drop off? Yeah, and but stuff even and, even take but a, no, it's even basic take education. Away the dorm no, you're right. Yeah, 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 it's like the tuition. Yeah, you know, it's just insanity. And mm-hmm. I think it's all because college loans have become so available, mm-hmm. and so because why university, not? Yeah, Free money. so now the university doesn't have like a supply and demand mm-hmm. where they have to keep tuition reasonable you know if if people couldn't afford it they wouldn't be able to make it forty thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. now people really can't afford it but people don't think that because they can go get a loan for forty thousand dollars a year and then they don't know it's people like your a, age or just yeah. stuck with the debt with like oh. literally a house mortgage yeah it's terrible and and, <laughs> and then you put on top of that that I don't think my generation is doing a good job being teaching people to be practical either. So like what you're saying, go follow your dreams, have a passion. That's fine. But you know, you need to, if you are going to spend $40,000 a year in tuition, you need to get a degree in something you can get a job with afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to spend $160,000, you better come out with some sort of skill that someone's going to hire you. Uh, you can't like a skill that can't be learned by watching maybe 40 right. hours of right. YouTube videos. Right. I mean, people who go in and get, I don't even know, I hate to say a degree because someone may be out there with that <laughs> degree, but let's just say, you know, bird watching, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You know, because you have a passion for birds. Mm-hmm. Well, then you've got $150,000 yeah. in debt. You have to and compare, nobody needs a is it a high-paying in, job? Yeah. Is it a need? Is it in demand? Is yeah. it in demand? And so I just think there's a lot of conversations. And the thing that's so messed up with that, it is college and high school should be pre- preparing you for jobs that don't even exist right. now. Right. And so if they're not even preparing you for jobs that exist right. during that time, yeah. you're, just, you're just screwed. Yeah. yeah. There's and no so, hope. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I think that a big correction is coming. I hope it's coming soon Mm -hmm. because I I don't think it's fair to kids your age to have this pressure to pay so much for tuition. I hope there's a big correction coming in tuition and I hope there's a big correction coming in just the structure of education. education. There's no reason why your first year, your first two years should be English and history and all that. The Everything that you had in high school. Yeah, high schools are so competitive now and so advanced high school is that you college. don't need to repeat it in <laughs> yeah. college just go straight into like a two-year degree yeah. that is you know really focused and intense on what you want to learn mm-hmm. like computer science what you had to take for computer science was ridiculous and you were three years in and it never really coded I legit, you know? I mean, I did code, but it wasn't project based. Like, it would right. always be the questions it's like would foundational. be. Like, foundational. Exactly. The questions would be make a pyramid out of asterisks mm. with four loops. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But it I mean, was that's never. Good to learn the foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... but I was doing that three years into yeah. it. And it, wa- it wasn't project based. Right. So you right. had no idea how to take the code that you would study in a book right. and apply it to real life. And right. legit. Still to the day I dropped out, we were still doing all of our computer science homework and projects on paper. Yeah. See, that's just insane. I it would literally like yeah. writing it yeah. out. I'm yeah. like, guys, so, guys. See, and I, computer science, I mean, computer science though, um, all of these tech companies have taken a good step forward to where they're doing these coding boot camps. Right. Where yeah. you go Microsoft to a super intense coding right. boot camp for 16 weeks right. and they literally train you to either like be their employee yeah. or it's structured to where it's like, this is what Google employees need yeah. or Facebook employees yeah. or just like basics. So like people kind of need to adjust their mindset on it too right. because they'll see that boot camp and right. say i can't afford twenty thousand right. dollars i'm like right. you, dude yeah, twenty thousand dollars 16 week boot camp yeah or a hundred twenty thousand yeah. dollars for college debt and it's weird in terms of computer science and coding i feel like it is the next language that everyone's going to have to know yeah. and not like the people who are banking right. on uh 
like who are getting these huge salaries because they're coders is right. because they're coders right now right. because the world is so desperate for right. it right now but right. we're training up you know right. now in high school and ele- even elementary school right. people are learning how to code and so it's going to become almost this next like basic skill right. Right. so now you have to have the mindset if you're like a middle schooler or a high schooler yes learn how to code yeah. because you'll but for sure have a job but you're not going to have a yeah. 200,000 salary as a yeah. coder 10 years right. from now so you have right. to think even beyond that like yeah. what is going to be yeah. beyond that but there still is room like <laughs> You know, there's average and there's good. Mm-hmm. So even with coding, there'll be a lot That's of true. average and good. But there's always that pe- those people that are going to step out above the average. Mm-hmm. And so... To me, that's what you have to strive for. No matter what you're no doing. No matter what you're doing, whether it's coding or bird watching <laughs> or whatever. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you decide, if you have that attitude to put in the work and go above and beyond, you're going to stand out. It doesn't matter what field you're in. Yeah. You know? And it's like if you want that above and beyond life, being okay with that. Like there's yeah. no, I think, to the the stuff that I watch and the people who I follow it's very motivational and very like do this get this yeah. you're gonna live on the next level but it's also okay if you're like an average person yeah. who wants that average life like I'm an average person yeah, yeah. Average like, it's okay. life and I don't, I'm very happy. where people get messed up yeah. though is when they want that extra life but they don't have the work ethic right. to back it up right, and right, that's right. why I think people are so screwed up right. in the head right now because yeah, they're getcha. they're seeing the Gary Vaynerchuk Instagrams yeah. and, and and they want to do and, them but exactly not and the to. more the people who are worse than Gary like I love what Gary does, but I think a lot of people misconstrue his content. But then you have people who are showing off the Lamborghini Guinis yeah. and Mercedes G wagons, right. and they're very motivational. But then they put out this message of like, "Oh, it's easy. Yeah, yeah. like you deserve this." Right. And it's like, yeah, not a lot well, of people. <laughs> I mean, to me, you either have a work ethic or you don't. Yeah. You know. And so even if I was a garbage truck driver, I would be the best garbage truck driver right. there was. You know what I mean? Right. Because it's something internal. It's not It's not because I want to drive a Lamborghini. It's because right. I take pride in my work. Mm-hmm. So I think no matter what you do, if you have that work ethic and you have pride in your work, you're going to you're gonna do fine in life. Mm-hmm. I mean, you are. You're, you're going to do fine in life. I don't care if you're a woman or a man or purple or green. Yeah. People respond to that. You know, they really mm-hmm. do. But yeah, going back like to the university thing, I'm hoping that as more people like learn, like through internet resources and things like mm-hmm. that, uh, that that will also bring pressure on the university. Oh, totally. As, as enrollment goes down. Yeah. I don't know if it and will, why, but because but why look do at you Khan mean, Academy yeah, and, yeah. and thing, you know, Khan Academy taught me how to do everything in regards to physics and right. like right. I watched yeah. those videos right. but more importantly not just teaching us the things that school is right. teaching us but actually teaching us life skills, skills. Yeah. that's why yeah. I hope you know with my channel I want to be like inspirational and entertaining but with all of the like educational stuff I do right. I hope that I can give people the skills yeah. to go pick up a camera and actually make right. something right. like when you can, can connect watching a 10 minute tutorial to right. actually like grabbing a camera yeah. and then having a final result you're yeah. doing and like yeah. you're learning by doing and yeah. that's exciting yeah. and so yeah you know. I mean I, I think the university model as it is today if they don't update it and kind of modernize it mm. it's not going to survive no I mean who's you know? doing it right is anyone doing it right you know, I don't know. Does Elon Musk need to start a school? Maybe, maybe. He's I mean, as far busy. as I know, they're all following the same standard model. You know, it's so frustrating. I know because even your brother with school right now, he's he's still doing basics. He's doing mm-hmm. English and history, and I mean, it's just dumb. It's so stupid. But they have to do that so they can get their extra forty thousand dollars a year for two more years. I mean, think about that. They would they would cut their revenue in half yeah, no, if true. they cut it down from four years to two years. Mm-hmm. Why they have no incentive to do that. Yeah. They don't care. They don't care if they're putting out this a, a well educated. So I know, it does it makes too, me see? so angry. I know. It does I'm me just too. Like, oh, Cause even throughout high school when the late nights in high school of yeah. AP homework, yeah. when I like and I remember being so frustrated that I was in the crossroads between AP homework and tax. Yeah. yeah. How tax is a standardized test in Texas 
where they have to hold everyone, whether they're in right. regular classes, pre-AP or right. AP, to a certain standard. Right. So you could be a rock star and doing AP physics and doing all that stuff, but you have to go and relearn biology, biology. <laughs> because that's what they're testing everyone. Yeah. So while you're studying for the AP physics test because you want to get college credit, oh, you're not going to get college credit because yeah. you have to worry grades, about... Yeah the tax biology test because you won't be able to graduate high school without it that was such a bad time for you i really was so worried that you were going to just jump off the cliff (laughs) you're so stressed oh my gosh because it's like i'm i don't know i'm someone who can't just like mail it in no no. so when you're trying to go all in on every aspect of your life like and then we were you were doing tutoring for the act yeah oh yeah, Yeah. yeah tutor oh yeah tutoring for the act but see, that was the only thing that I could look back and say it was worth it. <laughs> no, and that was because the it. ACT tutor and like, difference. you know, we had a, I tutor was it once a week for the yeah. ACT or it might be twice I or twice a week. I don't know. And yeah, I improved like my score weeks. six points. Yeah, and if you not know, more. I think it was even it was more six. than that. Was it was it a twenty-four six? to a thirty, okay. um, and so that's what helped me get a scholarship was yeah. that. But then the whole grand scheme of things, I was the mo- I was the biggest stress ball yeah. in high, you know, yeah. in between basketball. Tough. AP, music, like band practice, AP, like, and that's so many kids. Yeah. And you were working too, remember? And I was working and I was refereeing and... And you were a hostess at the Pancake House. I was a hostess that. at the Pancake House. So if anyone goes to the Pancake House... The and original Pancake the House. The original Pancake House. In Great Fine. In Great Fine. Just think, wow, this is where Sarah... Made and some it just bucks. started. You were like the OG hostess. At I, the was. House. I was. I was. It just opened up during that mm-hmm. time. Remember those beautiful shoes you got to wear? Yes. Those they were like black. clogs, big black clogs. <laughs> yeah. I've had many jobs, but that was my least favorite. Because <laughs> that was the only really true punch in, punch out yeah. job I had. Because everything else was either refereeing basketball, yeah. giving guitar lessons, babysitting. Yeah. And didn't you have to be there like at 4.30 in the morning on so weekends? So early. Because we had to school. Squeeze orange juice. Yeah, Psh, yeah. It was yeah. awful. See, what jobs did you have? My first job was a shoe salesman, and I was actually uh, what Mar- Maryland's House of Shoes on the square in Weatherford. Uh, they just opened, and Mary Beth and I, my friend Mary Beth and I, wanted a job, and so we went up there, and I told him I was sixteen. And I was only 15. <laughs> I don't know how they didn't check my... Anyway, but that was my first job was as a shoe salesman, getting to put shoes on. Did you sell a lot of shoes? I did, yeah. Did yeah. you get commission or no. was it a flat? No, it was just flat. But I mean, I think minimum wage back then was two thirty-five an hour. So oh, man. I, I think that's what it was. I think it's two thirty-five an hour. Um, and so, you know, you would work 20 hours... And that's 40 bucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then they take taxes wow. out. But, you know, as a, but, I mean, how a much, sophomore in high school, I, yeah. was, I was rich. How was much like, was like a hamburger and a Coke back then? Though? Um, I would go to the Sonic for lunch every day. And it was, you know, it really wasn't that much cheaper than it is now. I mean, it maybe I would spend, you know, three or four bucks. So really. Well, that says food. a lot about Sonic, to be I honest. Know, you Stay could still away go from eat. Sonic. Yeah, Disgusting. You could, you could still go eat at the Sonic for three or four dollars. <laughs> um, I think gas was like 75 cents a gallon. 50 cents a gallon because I remember thinking gosh what if gas ever got to be a dollar a gallon it would cost you it would be the end of the world yeah I just remember thinking it would be 20 dollars to fill up your tank who could afford that oh my gosh and now look where we are I know you know what's something that I've kind of held on to was I don't remember it was recently maybe I was preparing for a video or something And I very confidently said, like, oh, I've never had any real failures in my life. And yeah. then you sat there for five minutes. And you're just like, oh, no, remember when you <laughs> failed at this? And then you failed at that. And then, yeah, you turned out to not be good I at did. basketball. So. I never said that. <laughs> good no, at basketball. I'm just saying it was like. You've had some moments. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was, that was a lesson in terms of, like, I think if you just keep busy and keep yeah. moving and keep progressing, you don't, your well, failure, you yeah, aren't going to notice. Dwell. You don't dwell. You're not going to notice yeah. failures as failures. Yeah. No, I um, agree. 
And so every time now that I do feel like, oh, I didn't get this audition yeah. thing, it's almost like, mm, okay, I'll, else. there's going to be yeah. something else, you know, yeah. and you just like move on with yeah. your life. Yeah. I mean, I think that's an <clears throat> attitude mindset that you decide you're going to have. Right. You know, if, if, because life is that way. You get some things, you don't get some things. You right. just keep moving. Any wise words of wisdom for the peachy fam out there? You know, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't let things Don't let get the you haters down. Hate. Don't let the haters hate. Hate is going to hate. Um, just, you know, I don't know. I guess just you be in control of you. You know, if you don't get something, don't think it's because, I mean, you know, people today that say, oh, I didn't get this because they don't like women or, you know, whatever. Women. Just, just you know, if, if you don't get something, like you don't get the, you didn't get the interview. <laughs> Not instead of being enough. yeah instead of being bitter about it and say oh i didn't get it because i'm just not pretty enough well maybe instead just maybe be more thoughtful about well what could have i done different mm-hmm. you know and what, what are the opportunities yeah, that, that can come it. from this so just, usually through things you meet people yeah. that can be future collaborators right. and, and so not everybody gets everything so just learn from mm-hmm. the failures learn how to move forward and then like you said take advantage of opportunities that come out even from failures make like nike and just do it yeah because i really and truly i think most people in life want you to do well they want you to succeed i I think sometimes we kind of if you leave the house thinking that the world's against you the world's probably going to be against you because you kind of admit that but if you leave the house thinking this is a good day and i'm going to go you know slay it you're probably going to have a good day it's attitude, Sarah. Attitude. So check your attitude. Mm-hmm. Step out on those front steps of your his or apartment mm-hmm. and say, hello, world. I'm here to seize it. Seize yep. thine day. Mm-hmm. Watch out. Watch out, haters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed this special edition yes, of the Creative so Exchange thrilling. with my mom. I think we had good conversation. I think this so. This is fun. Yeah. And even if they don't watch it we'll have this that's true. forever that's true to share to your grandchildren yes that'd be fun that <laughs> when are they coming <laughs> is there any announcements you want to make uh, no <laughs> apparently john announced when what his timeline is in a recent vlog okay well um, tell him i'm on board with that timeline that'd be fine <laughs> five years popping out babies in five years no, I want to pull you, like, your move, like, yeah. 30 and 33. Yeah, I was 31 and 35. Mm-hmm. I was 35 when that's I kind of Almost 35, I was 34. A... Yeah, that's kind of, but mm-hmm. I didn't get married until I was 26. Right, well, so. we'll see. Yeah. Who who knows, yeah. you know, it, it, I'll have to um, but I'm okay. look I mean, at my hustler schedule. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's just you do you, Sewa. So, uh. You do you. You do you. you, do you. But yeah, I wanted to have this special edition podcast just because something super special is coming up this week. By the time that you're listening this week, I am dropping the first episode of the How to Podcast series. Fun. So I've been doing. I can watch that and start a Mama Dichi podcast. There you go. Oh my gosh, you heard it here first, guys. We're going to have the Mama Deech, Mama Peach podcast coming out soon. Uh, but no, this the whole point of this kind of like new docuseries that I'm doing is to show you like behind the scenes of, you know, how to start a podcast. So we talk gear, we talk about distribution and everything, but ultimately it's just a fun, it's just going to be fun. And it'll be cool to see the behind the scenes of setting up the podcast for Gary V. You know, that was my first episode. And I didn't know it was going to be my first episode because I didn't want to start um, the podcast until a month later. But when Gary Vaynerchuk yeah. himself says, or his, when team. Gary when Gary Vaynerchuk's team says, yeah, we can do a podcast, but it has to be on this day and release the next day. You don't ask questions, right? So you right. start the podcast a month earlier than scheduled. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of cool behind the scenes stuff. So you guys can make sure to stay tuned at youtube.com slash Sarah Dietschy. I can't even talk, but um, thanks Mama Peach for being on the And see, she doesn't even have anything to promote. She's just here in good faith. Gosh, I wish I had something I to know. promote. I know, where's your book? Hint. <laughs> She's promoting. Okay, Nick, I'm looking for my Yeah. <laughs> um, Twitter, you're very, yeah. 
Okay, Twitter's so fun. there you go. Everyone go follow Mama Peach on Twitter. Her username is just Jeannie Dietschy. She will be linked in the show notes and in the description. And you guys can go say hi to her. I have Instagram too, but I just barely use yeah, it. Yeah. It's not too Her exciting. Instagram is going to be the next yeah. step. But yeah, Twitter, really I would say, is the number one destination. Yeah. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. There's a new episode of the Creative Exchange every single Monday. And next week, guess what next week is? It's got to be more exciting than this. L Mills. <gasps> L Mills. Oh, L Mills is next week, it. guys. So make sure that. to stay tuned. If you're listening to me, you can view me at youtube.com slash the creative exchange. If you're viewing me right now, you can listen. You know, you should have a podcast with Elle Mills' mother and, and myself. We're going to, that that's, that's the next step. We're going to figure out how to make a Elle's mom and my mom video okay. because be y'all fun. are awesome. Yeah. yeah. You could be the moms of YouTube. They could be. Yeah. So until next time, guys, keep creating. And thanks, Jeannie. You're welcome, sweetie. I love you. Love you. <laughs>